Welcome back to Pepper School here at the Garden of Apologies. I am Eric. I am your Barmy Farmer. I've been growing peppers here since 2014, so that gives me nine whole years of experience. And peppers like to cross-pollinate. So for this, our 10th episode, we've got a, a little bit of a special thing we're doing. A couple episodes ago, we looked at plant genetics, and I brought out three different phenotypes of a cross that we are starting to grow out here. A small pod, got the big pod, this one's the Goldilocks pod, right down the middle. So, if you're watching the genetics episode, then you know the, the background on this, that this was an accidental cross of a pimenta denida. I'm sorry, I keep doing that. See, most of the cross I do right now, is I'm working on a pimenta denida and red ghost pepper grower. You'll see that in a few episodes. This is a petite marceline. So, it's a little squat, amber-colored French bell pepper. It's an heirloom from France. It might even be the national pepper, if I recall correctly. And uh, a giant red cayenne. So I don't know the actual genetics behind the giant red cayenne, other than that the pods look quite a bit like this. And I found a bushel of cayenne peppers at St. Jacob's Market just a few years ago. So I bought those. They were all this size. So it makes me think there might be some Thunder Mountain Longhorn or some other kind of genetic in there. But it, I've been growing it out for a few years. There was a, an accidental cross-pollination where based on my garden map, I am 99% sure that based on the plant characteristics for the F2 I got last year, it looks like it's a cross between the Pimenta Denida and the Red KN. The plant was labeled Red KN. I was expecting pods like this. The previous year, the plant had been beside a, uh, a Petite Marseille, and I got pods like this. So I saved this, the seeds from a pod like this. I grew them out, and I have three different pheno shapes. I've got the big, I've got the little, and right down the middle. It's the Goldilocks pod. Nice big smile on it. So, I haven't tried these pods this season. So we've got a little bit of excitement where we're going to have a, a little bit of show and tell, and then we'll eat some of this. And as that, the cats are bouncing around here behind me, because it is always cat time here in the Garden of Apologies. So let me just get these sliced open for you, so you see what we're looking at. So this is the, the little pod first. So I'll call this Pheno 1. Yep, exactly what I expect. Nice, just thin walled pepper. A little piece of it came off there, so I'm just gonna get rid right into the tasting right now. Hmm. It's really fruity. But I'm not getting any heat at all from that. Let me try a chunk up here near the pit. So last year, I think it had about a, on my palate, about a jalapeno level of heat. So here's a chunk up from the top. Let's try this again. Oh, here we go. Come on, let's pick it up. There we go. Awesome. Pick it up. It's like I'm a ska singer. Now, you know, being a ska singer is quite a bit like being a parent. I guess I'll throw a dad joke at you here. Because all you say is, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Nobody takes it seriously. All right. So Podfino 1 has no discernible heat. So uh, it's got a flavor that's reminiscent of the Petite Marseille with a uh, sort of a tropical fruit and uh, maybe a, a dash of cherry under the tropical fruit. But that's it. No heat whatsoever. So let's try our Goldilocks pod. See how that one goes. So I grew these last year. The pods look just like this. Oh, there goes marmalade. It's always cat time here in the Garden of Apologies. 
I go, I don't have one of those uh, fancy big cleaver knives like some of my pepper friends do. This is just a cheap thing from the grocery store. But it makes the pods go open. So the knife is certainly knifing. It's got a nice, uh, nice bell pepper smell to it. I can have a big old chunk of this, see how it goes. So, the medium, the Goldilocks pod. Let's see if this one has any heat. Hmm. Yep. Flavor's right there. It's got that tropical flavor that... Uh, almost reminiscent of a Jolly Rancher. It's got such a such a tropical kick to it. We just get it right on into the pith here and see if I can get my palate to sizzle a little bit. And I've got a seed, but there's really no sense in eating the seed because contrary to popular belief, there is no heat whatsoever in the seed. Okay, there's a, I feel a, a tiny bit of throat tickle there. So I had a piece of the pit, and that's the, the white membrane that holds the seeds. There's no actual heat in the seeds, but that little white membrane you're looking at there, that's what contains the capsaicin glands. So if you want to nerf your pepper and pull the heat out of it, you want to cut all of that out, and then you've got the vein of pith that runs down the center. You pull that out, they'll turn this into a mild pepper. Although, this is a mild pepper. Based on my palate, I'm going to estimate that this is perhaps 500 Scoville heat units. Where I just had a, a tickle of heat there that let me know that there was a, a little bit of heat. But I, I had no mouth heat, uh, no, no fire flavor to it. On a heat basis, it's a completely underwhelming pepper. So it's a lot milder than it was last year, but it does have a, a very similar flavor, maybe a hint less smoke. So I may end up planting last year's seeds again. Is that last year, just working my brain math on it, last year is the first year of the cross, so I'm going to call that an F1. So these are now the F2 pods, and the stuff I save from this will grow out F3 for next year. And as we touched on with the genetics episode, it's usually the seventh filial generation where things level off and you start to get consistent pod shapes and consistent pod characteristics. It's not always the seventh generation, but that's a good rule of thumb that it is, it's usually somewhere around seven. Some will stabilize earlier and some like the Reaper never really seem to stabilize at all. But let's jump into our third pod from this Petit Marcelet and KN cross. Oh my goodness, marmalade just fell out of the tree. Well, she's a terrible squirrel. I just heard it come crashing down. I don't think she broke a branch, but she's got three siblings over there checking her out and making sure she's fine. Oh, there she goes. Now acorns up the tree. Lessons are not always learned. <laughs> All right, so here's our pod. If you watched last episode with the giant can, this is exactly what the pod looks like. So the, this generation looks exactly like the, uh, the grandparent. So last year's pods look quite a bit like this. This is something new. So I found that these, the cans I, I grew were particularly mild. So they, they, I don't think they had the 50,000 Scoville heat units, 30 to 50 or so you get around a on This, it feels like it was a lot milder, but that's just, it could be a subjective thing based on my palate, because I've been eating a lot of peppers. All right. Well, that is definitely the hottest of the three. So that's the only one that has really any 
discernible heat to my palate. It's it's mild, I'd say around the jalapeno level. I'll estimate, I don't know, eight to 10,000 Scoville heat units, but it's got that really, really nice flavor, the, the tropical fruit. So I've got consistency across the three different pods where the flavor is basically the same. And I have the extremely mild, I have the just a little touch of heat and then i have the actually a hot pepper but a very mild very mild hot pepper and there we have it this is the first filial generation uh the pods that have grown out i'm lying to you this is the second filial generation first filial generation was last year this is now the f2 so we'll see how this goes i'll keep growing it out Based on the flavor, this is a, a terrific pepper. I think it's going to be very useful. I, I can do, definitely do some work with this. I may end up making uh, something akin to a fermented cayenne sauce. I made one last year. It was it didn't have the same kind of vinegar, vinegar forward snap that you expect from that uh, that sauce from the the wing place in Buffalo. I don't need to throw the name out because everyone knows what it is, and it just tastes like vinegar to me. But my wife, Nina, really, really liked it. So I ended up giving her the entire batch. And I'll, I might make a batch again this year. And if so, maybe I'll take a, a good Canadian name and call it Gordy. That's a Canadian name for you. It could be Gordy's Red Hot. Maybe. Don't hold me to that. I might make something else. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode here at the, the Garden of Apologies. Again, I am Eric. I am your Barmy Farmer and amateur competent horticulturalist. Please uh, hit your subscribe button, share this with your friends, or loved ones, or anyone else who wants to learn about some exotic peppers. And I'll be back. I've got another six peppers queued up for you for next time. Thank you for watching. Thanks for learning and exploring with me. And we'll see you next time.